the majority of dates you're going on should not be disappointing. If most of the time you're showing up and you're disappointed by how the girl looks, or most of the time you're showing up and you have no chemistry with this girl because she's not how you imagine from her messages, well, that's you're not doing your due diligence. Question we have today from a Mr. Initials SE. Question is this, how do I avoid getting catfished? What are some telltale signs? Okay. So I will start off by saying I have never personally been catfished in the sense of going on a date and it turns out like it's some dude or somebody that's like completely not the person. What has happened, because anyone who's done online has run into this, is the girl shows up and she doesn't look like her photos. And there are definitely varying degrees of this, right? Like I've had situations where, um, you know, there, I went on a girl a date with a girl and from her photos, I'm like, this girl's a f***ing 10. And then she shows up and she's an eight and I still, you know, hooked up with her and we actually ended up dating for quite some time. And she was cute and fun and, and it was great. Um, and I was you know, a little disappointed she didn't look like her photos, but we still had a great relationship with her. She was, you know, plenty sexy and it was, it was fine. Um, and you should probably expect that. You should probably expect when girls have really, really good photos, expect that they're going to be um, a half a point to a point lower than their photos. If they look like they're 10, if they look like a 10, they're probably a nine. They look like a nine, they're probably an eight and a half or an eight, something like that, right? Um, and and that's that's pretty normal. In fact, the girl that, you know, looked like a 10 and probably objectively was an eight was, it was disappointing a little bit. I was actually, I was disappointed when I showed up, but she's still someone I would have wa walked up and talked to. She's still someone that I did find very attractive and I was still glad I went on that date and it still worked out very well. Um, so one way to avoid the, the phenomenon of the girl not looking like her photos is not to avoid it, but just to make sure the photos are such of such a high caliber that even if she doesn't look like them, you'll still be happy, right? So if the girl looks like a 10 in her photos and she shows up and she's eight and eight and a half, you're probably still going to be just fine. Um, so that's, that's one way to do it and, and definitely have really high standards, um, and, and take that into account, right? Expect that it's going to be um, a, a point lower and, and, and go in with that. And if, if you look at the photo and you're like, well, if she was any less attractive than this, I probably wouldn't go on the date with her. Don't. That's absolutely fine. Right. So that's first and foremost, one easy way to avoid the girl, you know, looking less attractive than you would consider dating. Let's not talk about not looking like her photos because nobody looks exactly like a photo, right? Every once in a while, very rare, but every once in a while you'll meet a girl who looks better than her photos. It is very rare though. Let's be honest. Um, but so she's not going to look exactly like her photos. What you're really hoping for is that she looks good enough that you're very happy you showed up on the date. That's what you're really going for. And with that said, give a little bit of a curve. Give a half a point to a point curve in general. Um, next thing when assessing a girl and assessing her photos is to um, consider all of the photos. So if she has three photos where she looks stunning and one photo where she looks obese, she probably looks more like the obese photo than the stunning photos. I'm sorry to tell you, she picked her photos. She picked her photos by choice. She had the array of all photos ever taken to her of her in history, and she picked these ones. And she did not have to pick one where she didn't look her best. And to be fair, she probably shouldn't have in some ways. Um, but she did, and she gave that information, so use that information. In fact, I think sometimes girls do that when their their other photos are, are a little too good. Maybe they've had the experience of a guy shows up and, you know, is like, you know, very excited about the photos and then shows up and she looks bad and they have a very unpleasant date where they get like a harsh rejection and the guy gets angry. So I think maybe girls actually do that as like a safety valve. You know what I mean? Like they put their like three really hot photos with like super photoshopped and good angle and they'll put one photo where they look like themselves so that if the guy ever got angry, it's his fault. It's his fault. She has the moral high ground because there is one photo that looked like her. Maybe, I don't know. It's, it's a theory. Um, in any case, look at all the photos. Um, because again, she probably looks more like her less attractive photo than like her most attractive photo, just, you know, probabilistically likely to be the case. So, um, that's another thing to take into account. Um, another thing to take into account and, you know, this being the, you know, the internet and the superficiality of the dating industry and whatnot, people won't talk about this much, but there's another form of catfishing, which is personality catfishing, which is, i.e. the girl sucks in person, right? As in like, maybe she's good looking, but she's just absolutely awful to talk to and incredibly boring, or she's a little bit psycho. I've definitely gone on dates with, with some girls that were flat out psycho. I, I remember, um, there's two that come to mind in general. Um, there was one girl in LA who was actually like, truly, truly gorgeous. She was a beautiful, beautiful girl physically, but she was loopy as hell. I swear she was like, she thought she was like living on Venus and like, you know, um, transcending some spiritual realm in her day-to-day -day life. It was just, she's just trippy and weird. And, and to be frank, like a little bit scary. Um, after about, I mean, she was really hot. So I did stay for half an hour, but after half an hour, I was looking for a way to like, to leave the date without, 
offending her or creating a stalker. It was very, very bizarre and f***ed up. So um, you want to watch out for that. I also um, am thinking of one where I had in New York where the girl was like, I swear she had like voices in her head or stuff like that. So I've, I've had some, I've had some girls, and both these girls were quite attractive actually, but they were just full on psycho. Um, so you want to be careful of that as well. And so one major thing that I do, um, not always, but um, I, it's, it's one of my best practices. It's a guideline I try to follow as much as possible and generally do is that um, if there's even the slightest bit of doubt about whether I'm going to get along with a girl or whether the girl's attractive enough or, enough or whatever, I want to do um, a phone call with her. And that's that's from, you know, back in the day when phone call was the best you could do. Better yet would be do a FaceTime call with her. Because in a FaceTime call, you can also assess how she looks. I do have a bit of a theory, to be fair, that when you talk to a girl on the phone, and maybe this is just from years of experience, maybe this is just me, um, me saying this because I, I had to deal with only phones for such a long time. I can tell from the way a girl interacts on the phone whether she's hot and whether she's cool for the most part, right? There are certain characteristics and mannerisms in the ways that hot, popular, you know, life together girls talk that other girls don't have and certainly like psycho girls and, and certainly girls who have some low self-esteem or who don't really look like their photos. I can actually usually tease that out even with an audio call just from experience. But if you're at all, you know, worried about it, do a video call. It's not a bad thing to do. Um, especially, you know, in the current environments where meeting up is, is a little bit bigger of a commitment and you have, um, you have lockdowns and stuff like that. I mean, Hey, why not use it to your benefit? Why not use that as an excuse to do a video call so that you don't get catfished? It's, it's, you know, it's there, use it. Um, but yeah, so screen for not only like attractiveness catfishing, but screen for personality catfishing too. Cause you don't want to be on a date with a, a full psycho. You really, really don't. And I've, I've had those two girls. I've also had like one or two girls that were just like kind of scary. Um, so you, you just please like avoid that. The other thing too, as long as we're talking about catfishing, again, I mentioned I've never been catfished, whereas a dude that showed up or like it was some kind of like, you know, you know, the body snatchers from the fourth dimension kind of like to kidnap me into like sex slave or anything that that's, that's never happened, obviously. Um, otherwise I wouldn't be here today probably. Um, but it is a good idea just giving you online dating advice. I do recommend being safe, right? Meet in a nice, well-lit public place, um, make sure that you, someone else knows where you are just in case do those precautions. I know those are mainly precautions that girls will take on an online date. Cause they're usually in a lot more physical danger than a guy is. But you know, if you, if you value yourself and you value your life and you put, you know, high, high, um, high premium on, on your attractiveness and worthiness to the world and think that someone might, you know, have, have a illicit use for you, then have a little pride, be a little, be a little precautious. Is that a word? Be a little cautious, take some precautions. Anyway, um, be smart about that kind of stuff. I actually am not a big fan of inviting a girl straight back to my place for exactly that reason. I know a lot of guys like to on Tinder invite the girl straight back, but imagine, like I'm imagining to myself, these like hot but crazy girls, would I have wanted to invite them back to my place before I found out they were all crazy? Probably not. That would have been, you know, kind of scary for me. And then I, for the next weeks, at least I'd be wondering, are they stalking me or are they in my bushes? Are they watching my comings and goings? Like you don't want that shit. So, um, I actually recommend, even if you could invite a girl back, um, don't invite a girl back if you have no experience with her. And this is even more reason to again, do that screening phone call or screening FaceTime call or, or whatever zoom call, whatever you want to use, um, in order to get to know the girl. Cause that's a great way to avoid being catfished. Okay. So that avoids psycho catfishing, that avoids being catfished to the point of you're left in that awkward situation of, um, you know, the girl's, you know, doesn't look like her, her photos and you, you feel like you're wasted your time that way. Um, the other major precaution that I, again, almost always take, there are exceptions. Every rule has its exceptions, um, but I'll, I'll get into that in a second. The other thing that I do as a best practice uh, for online dating is to make the initial date at a place that's highly convenient to me. So for example, when I was living in New York City, this was incredibly easy. I literally had a bar maybe 10 steps from my front stairs. That was a decent bar. So I'd walk out, turn right, walk down the stairs, and I'm there. So if I were to show up on a date and the girl's disappointing, my commitment to that date was about two minutes, right? And then I could leave if I wanted to, or I could do various things. Um, and you should be... I, I don't make it a habit, even if a girl doesn't look exactly like her photos or whatever, to, to just leave instantly on a girl you don't want to create that kind of negativity in the world. You also don't want to get reported on the app and you also don't just don't want some like vindictive person like having a beef with you. So I try and be polite and I'll stay like 10, 15 minutes, be nice and then like get a phone call and, you know, have a good excuse for leaving at, at the very least. Um, but you could just leave if you wanted to. I mean, it's, it's not, I don't have a real strong reason why not to. I just, 
I take extra precautions myself. Um, the point though is don't make the date hard for you to get to if you're unsure. So if you're at all unsure about the girl, again, screen her on the phone call, screen her on a video call, et cetera. But also don't drive two hours to go visit her for the date. Make sure you talk to her first. Make sure you get to know her first. Make sure you know what you're getting into. If she is borderline, then, you know, make her come to you. Now, let's say that the girl is the hottest girl you've ever matched with and you have the best banter you've ever had with her. Um, and she wants to meet up with you like very soon, right? Um, and you can maybe get her on a, on a quick phone call, but you can't get her on a FaceTime call. So you don't know if she exactly looks like her photos and she lives an hour and a half away. Well, in this case, it's up to you. I'd probably say go for it. I'd probably say just do it. Meet in a well-lit public place so you know you're not you're not endangered or whatever. But f it, just do it. Meet up near near where near where her place is so you have a possibility of it going well, and just go for it if that's the case. Um, because in that case, the odds of something really really good are high enough that it's worth it, right? And so that's what we're really assessing when you're dealing with catfishing, is you're dealing with risk and reward. Should you never get catfished? then you're probably doing something wrong, right? If, if you never, ever, ever show up for a girl who doesn't quite look like her photos, you've probably screened out more girls than you should have, or you've probably made the process of meeting you have so many hurdles and obstacles that you've weeded out girls that, that would have been really good dating options. So if you never have a slightly negative outcome, you probably missed out on a ton of positive outcomes. But that said, the majority of dates you're going on should not be disappointing. If most of the time you're showing up and you're disappointed by how the girl looks, or most of the time you're showing up and you have no chemistry with this girl because she's not how you imagine from her messages, well, that's you're not doing your due diligence, right? That's you're not properly messaging and finding out about her before taking a number potentially. That means you're not getting her on the phone or getting on a FaceTime call. Um, that means um, that you're, you're not doing the things that you need to be doing and you're not valuing your own time. And again, the other part of valuing your own time is set the date at a convenient place for you. Um, so those are my strong, strong suggestions for how to avoid getting catfished um, and also how to make it that even if you do get catfished, it's not that big of a deal. And again, it's not about the girl not looking exactly like her photos because that's going to happen even with hot girls. What you're really looking for is you don't want to end up on with girls that are below a standard you would have agreed to a date with had you known. That's number one. And you also want to avoid girls who are psychos and will be a negative impact on your life. So that's what you're really trying to screen for. Not necessarily that she has to look exactly like her photo every single time. Although obviously the hotter the photo looks, the more wiggle room and the more, more room for error you have, the, the bigger curve you can give her before she's below the threshold you would have been happy to date. Um, so those are my personal guidelines. Those are my personal standards. Um, and again, I will reiterate, be safe, um, have some, um, self-respect and have some, you know, self-love in terms of, you know, keeping yourself available for the next date and the next date and the next date. So, um, you know, be careful when meeting strangers in general, but don't be so careful that you never do it because you're going to miss out on a lot of life if you don't.